Well, what's up guys? It's uh, day two of putting the 5.4 back together. And uh, like I said, I, I didn't really want to do a video series or anything on it. So this will be just kind of like a little update video of what's going on around here. And uh, I, I did have some trouble with it. I will admit, uh, I had a little misunderstanding about how exactly you retime the, uh, the engine, but uh, I got that figured out. Uh, I was kind of frustrated with it yesterday evening. I had hoped to have the heads back on, valve train back in, timed, uh, and the engine pretty much covered back up. Timing cover on, valve covered on, yada, yada, yada. That didn't happen. Kept putting it together, timing it the way I thought it was supposed to be. And uh, the driver's side, I forget, I think it was number six cylinder. Just every time I'd start turning it, valve touching the pistons. I'm like, what in the crap is going on? So... Being I was kind of frustrated with it, the best thing I've learned to do in those situations is if I have time, I have the luxury of it, just back off, take a break or whatever. In this case, it was like six, seven o'clock last night. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna shut the shop down, cover the motor up, go home, relax, kind of get my mind back together. And uh, I kid you not, I had been in my chair maybe 15 minutes when it dawned on me what I was doing. and. Uh, Sure enough, come back out here this morning and tried what I thought. Oh, excuse me, I'm burping a lot here. Uh, anyway, tried what I thought was the issue and uh, put it together. What do you know? Thing rolls over great. So got that kind of lined back out, which I am happy about that. And uh, as you guys can see, we've got the valve cover uh excuse me timing cover back on both the heads are back on both the valve covers are back on and uh so that's good i'm, I'm happy about that that's at a uh that's at a pretty good spot uh i am waiting on a couple parts that are going to show up at the uh the local napa in the morning so which i've got more work i can do to it uh but i want to take a little break from that and uh because i'm kind of tired of laying over there in that engine bay and uh we're gonna see what the heifers are up to. Well, it's not officially spring here by any stretch. Uh, I think today's the 5th or the 6th of February, but been down here in the southern end of the country. Uh, we do get a lot of springtime stuff grows in early. And uh, these gals are out how well you'll be able to see them out there but uh they're out there picking at uh early season stuff like clover uh a little bit of ryegrass out there and stuff like that so they're they're pretty happy uh they have eaten a good bit of this silage bale that's out here and uh, it's getting down to the bottom it's getting pretty much to the point where they just they're not going to eat it unless they're absolutely starving and uh, we definitely don't want to get them there so i like happy cows and uh, these girls are doing pretty good something i will mention that i've noticed I, i've only been feeding this silage for a short amount of time but uh this one that i put under the edge of the barn here uh you can see they they've picked at it but they haven't eaten at it a lot and uh, something I've noticed with that silage is they'll eat in spurts. It's like, uh, I don't know, maybe if, if it's the nutrient density of it or what it is, which that stuff's pretty good. I, that was first cutting from last spring. Uh, lots of clover, ryegrass. I had planted some weed in there. Uh, hairy vetch that came in naturally. It, it was just pretty potent stuff. And uh, so, when I first put it out, they just, man, they went for it. They ate like a half a bale real quick. And uh, I was like, well, that's good. So, you know, that'll cut my requirements down for like sack feed and stuff like that, which I've, I've been giving them some over the winter, before, you know, previous years. And uh, kind of wanting to get away from that. I, I'd like to go all grass, basically. And uh, so I was happy. I mean, hey, they're eating a lot of silage. This is good, you know. They're staying nice and slick. Their hair looks good. You know, they're they're eating it good. They're comfortable. They're not out here begging for food, you know. 
uh, last thing you want to do is pull up and they just start bawling right out of the out of the gate. And uh, so I was happy about it. And then they slacked off, wouldn't touch it. I was like, man, what's going on? So I had put them out of dry roll and uh they ate on it a little bit not too much but they were out grazing a lot and uh so i kind of let it go see what happened kept them a dry roll available kept them a solid roll available and uh i came out here into the barn uh earlier and i guess maybe they've gotten used to being fed inside the barn now uh which is good Cause that's what I want to do and uh, you guys saw earlier on that video how much hay there was in this bale uh, that is the same one that I shot yesterday morning uh, which will be should be at the beginning of this video clip and buddy that dude is all but gone I mean there is very very little left in the bottom so I'm stoked about that uh, the whole idea behind the barn was this hay that, that they've been fed in here has been dry since it was rolled. Uh, I took it off the field, stored it under the roof, and it's, you know, never been rained on. And that's a luxury that I haven't had in the past. Uh, I haven't always had somewhere to put it up. And uh, that was something I really wanted to test and see if, is it worth it? You know, because when you store one outside in net wrap, you're still losing... 10 to 20 percent of your bale uh, about two inches off the top and the sides and then three to four inches off the bottom of the bale well they're not going to eat that and they're not more than likely going to eat anything really close to it so by storing it in the dry uh you know the whole bale's good you've lost basically nothing maybe a few percentage points off the very edges of it but you know like i said essentially nothing and I have never seen them eat down a bale that far. Uh, and I say them, not these heifers specifically. This is the first time I've really spent this much time with them. But just the cows that we've had out here in general. Uh, so you figure you're wasting, you know, in the neighborhood of 30% of a roll. Well, that gets expensive. So say you need 100 rolls a year to feed your herd and you're wasting 30 of those and in my current situation it costs me roughly 20 to 25 dollars per roll uh just to put the hay up and that's you know me owning the ground and owning the equipment that's fuel wrap time parts etc uh so it's pretty expensive venture and uh, I could see where it would add up real quick into being fruitful enough to feed them inside. Uh, and uh, so that was kind of the test for this and uh, see if it was worth, you know, doing it. And I, I think it is. So I think, you know, maybe this year we're going to move forward with trying to build a, a bigger feed barn, for se, or per se, and uh, a more dedicated place to store their hay. So, uh, that's why I'm taking a break from being a pickup mechanic. I'll do a little cowboy in here and show you guys how we have this arranged. Uh, I will say these gates that I put in here, uh, they're way too big, but uh, we spent basically zero money out of pocket building this just because it was a test deal. I mean, we're talking like had to buy some screws uh, for the sideboards over there and uh I, I think that was it yeah i don't think i had to buy anything else so that was kind of the idea these gates uh i want to change them over and build like a i don't even know what you call it like a uh a feedlot style gate where if you see these this ring's got these uh slants in the dividers so i want to build something like that that goes from here all the way across and actually instead of feeding just in that area what that would let me do would be i would actually put the bale on this side and unroll it and uh, that way i could push feed up to that that fence or that gate all the way across it and uh 
by doing that, everybody would get the chance to have an opportunity at the bell at one time instead of your stronger ones coming in and uh, pushing the weaker ones out. And then once the stronger ones get their fill, they head back out in the field. Well, the weaker one's natural tendency is to stay with them. So they actually kind of miss out. Uh, so that's the ultimate goal here. And uh, like I said, didn't spend any money. So these two gates, while they're ridiculously too big and they're hard to deal with, yada, 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 uh, they were here. I didn't want to use them for anything else, so just went ahead and decided to use those. All right, so the way I got this set up at the moment, I just got that chain on there, and I just chained these two gates together. And uh, so I open it up, and then uh, I've got this gate back here that leads into the field, and uh, I'll close it while I'm in there messing around. And uh, I need to get some better latches to put on this thing. These are a little, little on the inconvenient side. Yeah, I, I couldn't quite film all that and use both my hands. I, I need to get me one of those fancy harness things, but eh, you know, kind of trying to be tight. Anyway, so I'll just pull this up closed for now and. Uh, I can hear them out there mooing at me. But that'll keep those guys out of here. And what I'll do is uh, flip this ring up out of the way, which is a little bit of a stretch. So I would just flip it up and uh, then I can bring the tractor over the top of the gates and dump the bale over. Uh, when I fed outside, I just picked the ring up with the tractor, had the bale on the back, and uh, picked the ring up, pull up, drop the bale, then turn around and drop the ring back on it. Never even had to get off the tractor, uh, which that was handy, but I still think this is worth it. They're getting a, a better quality feed out of the deal, and uh, I'm getting more feed out of the deal, so it costs me less money. So it's a win-win all the way around. So let's get the 5400 fired up. Go get a roll. So you know that squeaking you may or may not be able to hear on there is not ungreased pins on my front end loader. <laughs> it's uh this loader's got one of those tubes right there with a level indicator on it. And uh, I hit the uh, edge of the barn with it, I don't know, about a month ago and tweaked it just slightly. And uh, it's been squeaking ever since. It's driving me nuts. And uh, I always think it's a dry pin or something, but it's actually that thing. So I'm gonna need to fix that pretty quick. All right, before 
before I get ready to dump this thing over in here, I get this net wrap off. I'm not a huge net wrap fan, but we haul a lot of hay and uh, it's definitely better for transport. Uh, it's also a lot quicker to get off the bale than string twine or plastic. So since I've got back in the habit of keeping animals down here, I, I think the ones that I, the, the rolls that I keep for here, I'll probably go back to using a, a natural grass twine on and uh, save all this plastic. But that wasn't the plan when this was rolled up. So this is what we got. As you can see, that's quite a lot of plastic for one roll. And uh, we're generally putting up about 1,200 or so rolls a year. So, not the best. Let's see if I can do all this while manhandling the camera, too. These bales just barely clear the roof rafters and my gates. So the idea here is I have to come around these logs I've been saving. The idea is to come in here, use the front end loader to push on that just a little bit. Up on that gate dump the bail off as close to the center as I can get it. And that's about as good as I can get it. I just have to back up a little bit. Put the hay spear back down. front end loader being up there just in case they somehow get that chain off uh, they'll only be able to push so far and they shouldn't be able to get out but that's pretty much the gist of it from there you just plop the ring back over it. another uh, another reason I, I forgot to mention earlier that uh, I really like feeding in this barn is uh, all around the ground here, I'm pretty much contained, except for out that gate. So all this loose hay that gets left down there on the bottom is mixed in with the cow pies and the urine and everything else. And so when feeding season's over, I can come in here and open those gates up and uh, scrape all this out and put it in my compost pile and uh, feed my garden. So I have done my compost with manure before and it works great uh, as long as you get the ratios right. But I haven't ever had enough volume of it to do more than a small garden. So I hope by doing this, uh, I obviously have a lot more volume of manure and, and compost in general. So hopefully I can get a bigger garden. Maybe even at some point be able to spread some back out on the fields. All right. I got a fresh roll of hay. Got the gate open back there. This one's chained back down. I, uh, these things are really a pain in the butt, but they don't come loose. So I'll actually have to physically break that chain or gate. And I don't think that's going to happen. So anyway, that's a cap of what's going on of around here. Nothing really exciting. Just kind of sharing what the, the workload for the week is and what's going on. So hopefully we'll see you guys next time.